All right, we're live. What is up? The sky? Space? I don't know. All I can say is happy 2023. It is a new year, but it's also a new mic. Every Monday night, we are here for our stay-at-home open mic presented by the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. My name is Richie Marufo, and I'll be your host and MC for the evening. We have, as always, a cast of regulars and sometimes new peeps who jump in and share their writing their poetry their art so uh like i said happy new year it's good to be here um i look forward to another full year of our monday night shows uh if you're tuning in for the first time welcome 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 it's good having you uh let us know you're here and say hello in the live chat or if you're just watching the replay later on just uh also let us know who did you like? Who did you love? Leave that down in the comments. Anytime you interact with these, it helps push it out to more people. That's that's the reason why I'm always going to be saying this. Other than that, though, like any other open mic, it is uh, based off of a sign up. So if you do want to perform and you're watching live, there is there will be a link provided in the description. Uh, wait a performer or two and I'll get that I'll get that updated. But other than that, if you want to perform, all you have to do is sign up. Everyone gets about five to seven minutes to do their thing with some wiggle room. Uh, if it's really packed, you know, we're probably going to be tighter on time. But if we have a little bit of, of, of you know, if it's not too packed, this is also a, a space where people can experiment on maybe longer stuff. Or I also encourage people to serialize their pieces. Part one, one week. Part two, the next week. Part three. Or you can mix it up if you want to be postmodern about it. Whatever you want. The whole point is that people, you know, if you want to share your work, we're here for you. You've got ears, an audience, and of course, um, you know, you try new stuff out, dust stuff off, or just, you know, just you want to get something off your chest. The most important thing is just the community that we have here. So it is a platform. After everyone performs, I'm going to encourage everyone to share their social media, places where you can purchase their books or any merchandise or any on future or oncoming workshops, events like that. So, um, and I know you guys do it every week, but you know it's the same song and dance. But you might have someone tuning in that is tuning in for the first time. So. Anyway, uh, I'm going to say a couple more things. What do I want to say? I don't know. Uh, of course, if you are in the El Paso area, we do have in-person open mics. I encourage you guys to attend. Um, I'm always looking for more musicians, singers, songwriters, and poets and writers to make it out because those are my favorite kinds of performers. And the more we get those people out, I think we have better nights. So uh, come through. Uh, if you're in the area, you can also shoot me a message. Um, I love to laugh. I love to laugh. You know, I like, I also like good shows. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead. And uh, as always, because we are on the internet, we have the luxury of being able to jump around easily from East Coast, West Coast, anywhere in the country. Sometimes we even go over the world in, the, in a snap, in the blink of an eye. So we're actually gonna start in El Paso with me here saying hi to you. But just like that, we're gonna go uh, to South Euclid, Ohio, or if you look in his background from space, because I always say, what's up, Doc? I can't help it. Um, I am. I need to grab my carrot. <laughs> I need to get my carrot ready for that next time, okay? Uh, no, nah, I'll save you guys with misophonia. Uh, but let's go ahead and kick things off with Doc Janning, as we don't do very often. So what's up, Doc? Oh, a lot of things. Cool. Um, as of, uh, well, we have a local gallery here called Heights Arts which uh, covers all of the arts, visual, uh, musical, and uh, literary. And I have just recently been uh, named the Literary Artist of the Month for, for January. And then uh, tomorrow morning is a swearing-in ceremony for our local county council. and. I was asked to come down to that ceremony and read a poem as part of it. And it is the first time ever that a poet has been asked to participate in the swearing in ceremony. So just, and then the uh, end of this month, I'm being given a gallery show, a month long gallery show 
of uh, matted and framed uh, copies, uh, broadsides, I should say, of uh, a lot of my poetry. So things are happening. And with that, I will start uh, with a poem which is titled, For You. Let me give this dream to you, rhapsodies of life and exuberance of love, sing in visions of now in the garden of delight. Caress of time and infinity, explore untold memories, moment by moment in canyons of mind. Kafune wind of forever, stirring thoughts and swevens to dance through eons of dreams and search amid tides of eternity. Tonglen and darshan of life, creating pathways of desire, nexes of existence and a raison d'etre. Sunrise crystal illumination brings a new horizon and dawn of a new day, dawn of new dreams. This is titled Samsara. A year ends, another begins, a continuing saga, a continuing cycle, a time of before today, a time of beyond tomorrow. Everything changes, everything remains and becomes in the infinity of the forever, beyond forever. Darshan of thought and imagination, darshan of thought and imagination. And this is something I'm, I started, well, <laughs> I wrote today. Uh, its title is Voyage. Oh love, come. Way anchor for landscapes of the heart, for shores of ecstasy and strands of joy. Let us sail bright Bangata across wine dark seas, through moon filled nights into sun filled days. Let us fly as Cupid's arrows on, true, nah, on truest course to embed with sweet pain a Tonglen and Darshan of forever. Our journey, an infinite exploration into ancient wonders and sacred secrets of emotion and imagination, of hopes and dreams, and the eternal dawn of Kutch, a voyage from we to us. Thank you. All right, man, right on. A little taste of the infinite to kick off the show. Nothing nothing too grand, you know what I'm saying? Doc, how are you? Thank you so much. And again, Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. All righty then. And uh, of course, congratulations and all that news you shared. That is amazing. Uh, if there's any links you want to share, go ahead and, and share that on uh, on, on our link. On our uh, no, links here. As, no links as yet, but uh, they will be coming. Gotcha, gotcha. Alrighty then, yeah. That's the other thing. If you guys have any links you want to share after you perform, I'll, I'll go ahead and forward them to the YouTube channel, which I just updated, by the way. It is it, now, if you are watching and you want to sign up and it's live, uh, there's still some time, some room to sign up. So the, the sign up link is in the description. Otherwise, um, I'll be monitoring. Other, other performers will be monitoring. And of course, if you are just here to support um, all the love in the world. I really do appreciate that. Once again, shout out to Jenny, for example, who's who's here again, supporting, just listen in. Um, and, you know, the usual cast of suspects. When you say live, I'll give you shout outs too, okay? Um, hey, that's and, the other thing. And Richie? Yeah. You know, in, in East Texas and in the Deep South, it's not YouTube. Okay, it's y'all tube? You got it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was just guessing. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Well, that's none of our concern in West Texas, <laughs> aka Best Texas. <laughs> that's funny. Let's put up a poll. I think I can do polls now. I should do that. Um, anyway, 
let's go ahead and keep this going. Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to, to take that. I was just being dumb, and it was true. Uh, okay, yo, we're actually going to come back to West Texas, the Westest of the bestest, uh, as Alan put it in his sign up too. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and bring up Robin Schofield. Happy New Year, Robin. How are you? Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, it's been really great. It's been a great holiday. It's a little cold here for me. So um, I'm going to read one uh, uh, poem of mine for the migrants. It's called Passage to the North. I didn't see the hawks today hunting rodents over the long grasses while floating flapless over the ridge. They have likely departed north. Nature gives both prey and predator an extra charge. Just today though, I heard the songbirds start up again, a sweet performance. Desert marigolds are about to bloom. Give them two weeks to migrate across the desert scape. Which way, America? Liberty is always further north. Follow the star out of one danger zone into another, La Fronteriza, to hear the question. Who are you? What do you want? Where are you going? Where are you from? You must step up to the threshold singing birds who think the hawk is gone. Heading north like birds, you arrive at the checkpoint with only what you can carry on your back and hold in your hand. You go in the footsteps of a revolution. You go from your life that made you leave your home, not even as safe as a nest in the ground. All right, and now I'm going to switch a little bit and do some uh, of my translations of Rilke. And these are from uh, Rilke's new poems, or as he called them, the thing poems. So he went to the Paris Zoo day after day. And he always stopped before the panther. Rilke, R-I-L-K-E, Rilke. The panther, his look has been made so weary from passing over the bars that it can't hold any more. To him, it seems there are a thousand bars and behind the thousand bars, no world. The smooth, soft gait of his strong steps rotates in small tight circles like a dance of power around the center in which a great will stands stunned. Only at times the curtain of the pupils pushes itself up. Then an image goes in there, goes through the stiff and silent limbs and holds up in the heart out of existence. Yeah, here's my little kitty. He always wants to be in my lap. This one's called Archaic Torso of Apollo. We cannot know his unheard of head in which the eyeballs ripened, but his torso still glows like a candelabra in which his gaze turned down a bit, yet compels and gleams or else the breast bow could not dazzle you. And in the soft turn of the loins, a smile could not go through to that middle which bore the seeds of generation. Or else this stone would stand abrupt and short under the sheer cataract of the shoulders and would not ripple so like a wild animal's skin and would not break out of all its bounds, rayed like a star. For there is no surface here that doesn't see you. You must change your life. 
And then this one is called Buddha in the Glory. And in German, it means both Buddha in the glory and Buddha with a halo. Oops, my cat's attacking me. Center of all centers, core of cores, an almond enclosing and sweetening itself. All of this twice to the stars is your fruit flesh. Hail to yourself. See. You feel how nothing more depends on you. Your shell is in the infinite expanse and there strong juices stand and penetrate. And from outside, help from a sun ray, then all above becomes your sun's full and burning, turning around. Inside you is still a beautiful dawn what will survive the suns. Oh yes, I should be reading for my cat Jeffrey, huh? For she can spraggle upon waggle. <laughs> All right, I have one more. It's my cover poem and it's by Jorge Luis Borges, translated by W.S. Merwin. It's called Years In. So I thought it would be timely. And it's, it's accurate. I'm not sure when he wrote this, but anyway, it's accurate. Neither the symbolic detail of a three instead of a two, nor that rough metaphor that hails one term dying and another emerging, nor the fulfillment of an astronomical process muddle and undermine the high plateau of this night, making us wait for the 12 irreparable strokes of the bell. The real cause is our murky, pervasive suspicion of the enigma of time. It is our awe at the miracle that, though the chances are infinite, and though we are drops in Heraclitus' river, allows something in us to endure, never moving. That's what I have to offer on this New Year's. This is Myra. Oh, yeah, and I'm yeah. doing uh, Tumble Words uh, this Saturday. I will be doing um, a workshop called Investing in Your Word Bank. And Tumble Words is 1 to 3 Mountain Time on Saturday, January 7th. So do drop by and we'll be talking about how to make uh, music in your poetry. And that is awesome. Oh, so can you say the last part one more time? I, I accidentally talked over you. Oh, that's okay. I just said, and your short stories. Cause I'm there you go. poetry and prose. Got you. I love it. Thank you, Robin. Appreciate that so much. Uh, definitely check out tumble words uh, for the uninitiated. If you want to get your writing done, go hit them up every Saturday online, 1 to 3 p.m. Mountain Time. If you want to learn more, just look up Tumble Words Project on Facebook. Um, and that's such a great title. I like that. I, man, I, I'm hoping I could be free, free this Saturday. I would love to to uh, check that out. Um, anyway, uh, yes, what's up, Jeff? Garage Poets. Hello, hello. Thomas Soto, Hombre de Chuco, Sandy Lands. Everyone tuning in right now. Good to have you guys here. Uh, it is our online mic. Uh, we're just getting started cooking up a storm to kick off 2023 and uh you know we're gonna keep sizzling right now with our next performer let's go ahead and welcome from pittsburgh let's see uh veil larkin happy new year veil welcome back happy new year hi hey it's good to see you okay my my, my camera is crooked um okay i'm gonna do three two short ones and a little longer one um I've got a new setup with a desktop computer for the first time in years, so I'm having to get used to doing things a little differently. <laughs> okay. This first piece is kind of about when I was a dancer. Spiderweb show. She likes them a little older, 
a little wiser, a bit more familiar with the dance of supplication and the sting of rejection. They come to her shy, like wide-eyed boys, and she brings them with her, leads them by strings and sensation, a feast for the eyes, a balm to the soul, and never a drop to drink. She dances for them, of course, since this is the game, the reason for their presence, the measured cadence of legal, legitimate, and illicit. The tighter they are buttoned up, or down, or together, the more transgressive she becomes. She dances to Ben Harper, the power of the gospel. She dances to Somewhere Over the Rainbow. She dances to Tricky, Bury the Evidence, and House of a Thousand Corpses, to live and overcome with its soaring, joyous reverence, to Bulls on Parade, to tell them how she really feels. She dances to the sacred, the profane, and she makes it all strange and silver. She is too cold for gold, but she warms better than their cash would if they hadn't given it away. And she takes their pain, and they are soothed for a moment they have bought instead of earned. One day in November, we all woke up. The gnawing of despair at our hearts, the glare of screens barely flickering, all numbers shifting on static frames and stark sunken faces. Tonight they rise like a tide of nightmares. All our old bullies, old tormentors, all our rigid families and vicious priests. Tonight they rise up and seize hold of our throats, fingers digging into skin and tendons, our breath caught in a vice, eyes shrieking. Tonight all our old terrors are tearing our future to shreds. Black, brown, every spectrum shade, all the colors everywhere, tattered scraps in the snow. They celebrated in the streets, like the news of our deaths was the best they had heard. All of them, those finger pointers, those stone throwers, those skinless accusers. They celebrated in the streets like a myth of jihad that never once happened the way all our wars happened. As the beast turned back to the masses, to the kin of its masters, we all saw it. The way the whites of its eyes were the white of our skin the way its teeth glowed ivory, the terrible ice of its breath on our face, all our pallor stalking us, all of us, the dark, the frail, the meek, the uncovered. Our skins become death as they always were. We annihilate ourselves and all others we meet, greet as strangers, aliens, and dispose of. Here's our reflection. This horror, our silence, this violence, our stillness, this nightmare, our wretched disaffection. One day, we all woke up, dawn revealing a wasteland of crumbling illusions and decaying wishes. One day, one poison day, one eye-opening, dream-snatching day, we all woke up. It's kind of about an election we had a while back. <laughs> And one more. In this moment of unknowing. In this moment of unknowing, I am looking to the sky. I am looking to the ground. I am grounded and flying, inspired and elated. And the warmth of your love, your peaceful embrace, means more than my mind, than my meaning, my memories, or how I wish the world would remember me. In this moment of unknowing, I am staggered by the song of your, your stars make. I am breathlessly bewildered and my own imagination fails and falls to the beauty of the truth beyond all being or unbeing, literal or metaphor. It's all real in your roiling eyes and we are spinning, dancing, delighted in spite of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Vale. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> and of course, any links? Yeah. Oh, you're already, you're already ahead of me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and replace really quick. Um, yeah. There we go. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna forward 
on the YouTube channel uh, links that Vale just shared, how to connect with them online, support the YouTube channel, Venmo, all that stuff, including a fundraiser for their upcoming uh play premiere play at uh the cell theater and uh, you can learn more about that as well as well as upcoming features i'll go ahead and pass those along to you guys uh once again welcome to the online mic i see that we just had uh tommy joe added awesome good to have you back yes <laughs> the rare the rare appearance but good to have you um yeah veil amazing work as always um thanks for sharing those uh we're gonna go ahead and go from the east coast to Back to our mountain time zone, at least, and uh, checking in Denver with Mike Sindler. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Our own lighthouse. Hey, <laughs> great to, to be here at the first one of the year, and uh, you know, we're getting near three whole years worth of this. It's pretty amazing, and we appreciate you doing it. Um, something else that I appreciate a lot, I'll get out of the way, lighthouseriders.org. And um, once again, just such a fantastic organization. And they just have all kinds of classes and workshops and stuff. I just actually had a long conversation today with somebody who wanted to take their first class there. And we discussed, you know, the different instructors and things like that. There's just something for everybody there. But um, that being said, I'll go ahead and start my little set here. And I'm going to start in my sentimental mode and this is 600,000 minutes it's been nearly 600,000 minutes since your voice first rang in my heart even now despite all expectation the second i hear it on the phone the same reaction starts how can anything be so cons constant how can anything be so pure there were years on years on years. I did not hear the tone. I guessed at my reaction, but could not know. Through mo though moments charged, through moments charged with anger, charged with sorrow, longing, pain, something deep inside waited in silence, always constant and consistent, always pure and precious it remained. When the accented musical timber and the laughing lilt dance on the eardrums, sweet vibrations of 600,000 minutes merge together, flowing tide dragging present moment to the past. Echoes reach off into the future, a skip across the water like tossed stones. How ironic that you took the time to call while I am writing this for you while the same wave rushes back to me. The way I know now, it will when 600,000 minutes more have passed the way I know now. Every minute, every minute, every minute will always flow. And we'll move from the, that to a little different memory called equal a scream i am metal it is my job to repel i cannot make myself soft when the small boy crosses the street at the wrong time i am rubber it is my job to roll i cannot lift myself aloft when skin and bone replace asphalt beneath me i am sand i am raw earth i am tarmac what is pinched from above grinds, presses, then releases. I bear imprint, but feel nothing. I am but the stage. I do not ask for action. Newton knew fate turned by function, became the sum that equaled a scream. And finally, get a little bit more abstract. Uh, this is called fumbling through. Words are not bricks to build walls. Words build vast spheres and humble cubicles. Words build stairs to the tower of song. These bricks fit together without hate or hesitation, bridging languages with and without translation. Words play like children, free to pick partners, not bound to prior prejudice. 
words, will use grammar as a guide, but will not fall into place when other means of construction form more novel beauty. Word bricks thrown in anger can clatter and crack against others, set sentence against sentence. They can smash, but not destroy truth. Those words are brittle bricks, too full of straw and dung to be stable. That which is built with them will crumble in time. Use better materials and build with care, even if you cannot see the result each layered line of letters reaches toward. Pavilions and cathedrals spring up from single cornerstones. If gravity reveals mistake and sends a section back to ground, learn and build back better. Each new word, touching word, benefits from learning. Experience and humility help bond these bricks into a place where others will find shelter. Glimpse the craftsmanship and perhaps become inspired to use new architecture of consonants and vowels to create sacred and profane constructions, dazzling and unforeseen, yet drawing on lessons learned in time spent sheltered that you fumbled toward and made manifest. And it's that time, folks, for me to put on the hat. And um, I'm going to start with one. Uh, just, I think, probably the most uh, sadly underrated songwriter. Um, people in Texas, of course, know him much better than others, but. Uh, the great Towns Van Sant, and um, this is actually one of his better known. He says it's to Comche Valley. The name she gave was Caroline, the daughter of a miner. Well, her ways were free, and it seemed to me sunshine walked beside her. She said she'd come to look for work. She was not seeking favors. For a dime a day and a place to stay, she turned those hands to labor. But the times were hard, Lord, and jobs were few, all through Tecumseh Valley. But she asked around, and a job she found tending bar for Gypsy Sally. She saved enough to get back home when spring replaced the winter, but her dreams were denied her. Pa had died, no word came down from Spencer. She turned to walking down the road from all the hate inside her, and it was many a man returned again to walk that road beside her. They found her down beneath the stairs that led to Gypsy Sally's. In her hand when she died was a note that cried. Fare thee well, Tecumseh Valley. And I thought I would do another real quick uh, by perhaps the greatest of contemporary songwriters or songwriters ever, Mr. Mr. Dylan. Um, not as well known a song as usual. It's called Only a Hobo. Thought it went along with that. As I was out walking on a corner one day, I spied an old hobo in a doorway he lay. His face was all grounded in the cold sidewalk floor. I guess he'd been there for the whole night or more. Only a hobo, but one more is gone, leaving nobody to sing his sad song. Leaving nobody to carry him home. Only a hobo, but one more is gone. A blanket, a newspaper covered his head as the curb was his pillow, the street was his bed. One look at his face showed the hard road he'd come, and a fistful of coins showed the money he'd bombed. Only a hobo, but one more is gone, leaving nobody to sing his sad song. Leaving nobody to carry him home. Only a hobo, but one more is gone. 
Does it take much of a man to see his whole life go down, to look upon the world from a hole in the ground, to wait for your future like a horse that's gone lame, to lie in the gutter and die with no name? Only a hobo, but one more is gone leaving nobody to sing his sad song, leaving nobody to carry him home, only a hobo, but one more is gone. Thank you very much. All right, awesome. Mike Sindler, thank you very much, sir. I'm going to have to uh, check out more Towns Van Sant for sure. I'm not too familiar with, with it all. Um, but yeah, we were talking about that yet, uh, last week in the after party for sure. Um, anyway, I, oh, you have a question there in the chat too, by the way, but thank you as always for, for jumping in and joining us. Um, we're all still waiting for, for the books. You can promote it and we can buy it and read it. Uh, but as always appreciate the performances too of your work, plus the cover poems. Uh, for the uninitiated, I'm just going to say first year, first open mic of 2023. Let's just say you're not familiar with the online mics. Uh, here, we also encourage the cover poem. So if you have anyone that you want to read their work of, we encourage it. Um, it could be anyone in the community or it could just be an artist. In fact, Mike does a great job of, of choosing lyricists to, you know, showcase their writing. And I love that uh, as well. So that's something that, that kind of we do here, the tradition. And we also Add, include the hat for effect right the cover poem which <laughs> is a shout out to kit as well the, the putting on the hat for the cover um already then let's go ahead and we're actually going to go from denver back to el paso for our next performer the west east of texas uh he's going to share some poetry slash prose um been he's been here to support too and and reading so it's just good to see more of them here at these shows. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead and welcome back to the stage, Alan. What's up, dude? I'm just chilling, man. I'm ready to perform. Happy to be here. All right. Welcome and back. Just happy to support. Thank you. So this first one is called Little Bird Blue. I wrote it about maybe a couple of nights ago. I want to say it's like a part of like an upcoming book that I hope to publish. So we'll just kind of see how that works out. But this is uh, Little Bird Blue. Little bird blue, come blow your horn out there in the meadow, somewhere in the corn, fighting for feathers, bounding over wheat, hiding from the field. Little bird blue comes a chirping. Somewhere the weather's growing warmer and the wheat is fading. Little bird blue, come a chirping. There is no place like the present to hide yourself. Little bird blue, come a chirping. The sky's pierce blue for a pleasant squawk because the little bird blue came a chirping. The weather's fine and smooth as the current. Wheat fields are growing low. Oh, how the wheat has grown low. Little blue bird came running around the corner and caught a jet stream to a place bounding with energy. Oh, well, little bird blue, what happened to the wheat fields? Weren't you a chirping? Little birdie blue flew too close to the sun one day and felt how good it was on its feathery wings. So little bird blue decided to take a dip. Oh, little birdie blue, won't you be a chirping when the world stops turning? When the jet streams meet the coast and the wheat fields are elsewhere now? Where will you fly to little bird blue when the world stops a turning? Oh, little bird blue with your coattails flapping in the wheatless wind. Won't you find somewhere else to take a dive at? Oh, poor little birdie blue, what happened to you? You never flew. Not quite like the little birdies that hang around wheat fields and flap their wings till the dust comes a rising up to meet their wingtips. Oh, little birdie blew it. Poor little birdie went past the wheat fields a chirping. The wee little birdie blue took a dive beyond where the wheat fields get low. Poor little birdie blue never went a chirping like it did when the wheat fields were low. And when, the, and when the wheat fields were high, there weren't a darling in the midst to catch a drift and catch the sweet note of a hum murmur too low where the wheat fields aren't low yet. Poor little darling caught the whiff of a gust and rode it to where the sun separates the air and they just kept on going. Poor little darling beat its wings till it couldn't hold, up to hold its body anymore and then decided to rest in a tree and wait out the coming wheat fields. Little darling never made it as high as when the wheat fields are teeming with dust. Poor little darling never caught a wind or a gust quite like when the dust settles and the wheat fields aren't as high as they used to be. There was no a chirping. Poor little darling was a little birdie blue too with a different color hue. Then that's the end of that one. Uh, this next one is called Chicken Scratch. 
and I'm just going to jump into it. <clears throat> Dirty, no good, down dealings left downtrodden markings in the dirt where hoeing had done its work. Little mounds like waves with clear indicators of where life had been. Ripples like a coastline of bad produce quite clearly marked by chicken stamping its hind legs. Black. Chicken scratch crossed markings that lines in the dirt. And then that one's the end of that poem. And then uh, this one, this last one for the night is called uh, Over the Hay Bales. Over the Hay Bales is where he took them. The hay was damp with perspiration and the hay was neatly packed together, strong, tight, bound. Over there by the hay bales is where Farmer Don likes to lean and peel potatoes. Farmer Don don't do much with the peelings, he just be leaving them in the dirt. Yes, over there by the hay bales is where I decide to rest when I feel I've had too much work. And then that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you don't have, you said, I, saw, I see here in your bio, you're working on, uh, on, on stuff, on feature events and stuff. So keep us yeah. updated. Thank you. I actually kind of want to, I was thinking I wanted to treat your open mics like a, like a world tour type thing. So I, I wanted to try and hit like all, all events that you have. So Mondays and then like the two Tuesdays that you have and the Fridays, I wanted to try and get a full month and then kind of see what I can do. Document it. Yeah. The world yeah. falls around Richie. That's right. <laughs> oh, let's not see that. All right. But thank you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, that'd be really cool. Let me know if you have any questions about that stuff. We'll come up with a calendar and uh, do you want to promote your social media uh yeah um sure uh you can find me at elaine the main a-l-a-i-n-t-h-e-m-a-n-e -E -E. um and that's where you can find me i only have one media account i might make a business one i don't know uh, but that's pretty much where i post all my post all my stuff whatever random stuff is going on in my life so yeah thank you guys oh appreciate that hell yeah man uh yeah good to have you here and uh yeah i look forward to that um could always use definitely all the time more writers performers at, at the mics you know uh we definitely need more writers represented that's for sure so come out and and, and especially once break the that numbers. Good. yeah 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 exactly um oh yeah shout out to julian matthews i just saw you signed up cool we have a couple new signups tommy signed up julian signed up so so stick around they're gonna be added to the list for sure um right now we're gonna go from el paso to the east coast and we're gonna check in with chameleon poetic that awesome new name but you've seen her before terry rose jertson what's up hey, happy new what's year up with, with you guys how are you hear my deep Thank voice you. <laughs> <laughs> it's because i'm i'm nursing an upper respiratory infection oh no i'm and trying still to get gonna read it, it? <laughs> but it won't leave gotcha so i have three pieces um one of them is actually about that and then i have one that is pretty i don't know which order to go in i'll just go in the order that i actually um, wrote them yeah yeah so the first one's called the gardener please don't put me in charge of a garden everything i try to grow dies from lack of water God did not make me the gardener, but the man. Anyone actually would be better, would be a better choice. The magnolia tree has got to be saved by mother nature. Hopefully she will not let it die. Please don't leave it up to me or the tree would only bloom in my mind's eye. So that's that piece. And then I, this one is about what I had said, hinted earlier. This is a public service announcement. <laughs> okay. Every rash is not shingles. Every cough is not COVID. Every fever is not COVID. Every cough is not shingles because there is a rash. I mistakenly thought I had shingles because someone who I had breakfast with today at our local diner looked at the rash on my arm and said it was shingles and then began to tell me of all the time that he contracted it and how it took three weeks to get rid of with a nasty cough and how he never wants to get that again. 
This along with some very graphic pictures of the rash accompanied by all the warnings of the chronic effects if not treated at the onset had me jumping into my car to the nearest urgent care with the question purse on my lips to the nurse practitioner after presenting her my rash. Is there any way this could be shingles? She perused my rash and said no. I was remembering how on the web, MD, it said that it could be spread if the liquid inside the blisters were to come into contact with a person who never had the chicken pox. And I remembered that my second child never had the chicken pox. I said to the NP, are you sure? And she once again said, no, that is not shingles. She then proceeded to describe what it was. She said that it, it was an allergic reaction to the medicine that was prescribed to me by my regular doctor, an antibiotic that was prescribed to me two days ago for my upper respiratory infection, which was a viral, not bacterial infection. She then prescribed three steroids to counteract the antibiotic. But I'm fine. All right. <clears throat> and this is called 108 New Year breath. Breaths. How will I use my mala beads? I was asked to set an intention for the year using the 108 beads attached to this chain that was made for this purpose. 108 being a holy and significant number in this practice. My, my community yoga class I attend every Sunday. My intention is to make this practice an active part of my life again. It brings me peace. It brings me joy. It brings me a sense of relief and accomplishment when it is completed. One down and many more to go. But I made it here and I was present and during my Shavasana, I breathed 108 times intentionally. 108 is the basis of creation, represents the universe and all of our existence. According to the Vedic sages, predating modern mathematical formulas. They had it all figured out. In the yoga practice of regulating the breath, it is said that if a person can be so calm as to breathe only 108 times in one day, enlightenment will be achieved. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to cough. No worries. Cheers to enlightenment. <laughs> Namaste. Awesome. And uh, do you have any links you want to share again for it? And of course, uh, for people maybe tuning in for the first time, how can they get you online? Um, well, the Chameleon Poetic is the new IG account. It was iFunny's mom for anybody that's still hanging on to that. I, I don't know what happened. That was a glitch or something with Instagram. Um, and then Teresa Rose Jertsen on my Facebook. And um, I have the Chameleon Chronicles, my book, which is still for sale here. Whoops, upside down. Get your attention. I, I took some advertising. I know about doing things sideways or upside down. Um, you can get that on red or green books um, running low, but you can still get some from me if you want to contact me on one of my social media handles. And I'll put that in the chat. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. And I'll definitely pass it along. Thank you again for joining us. Despite the void, you know, yo, get better. Okay. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Um, all right. So we're going to go from New Jersey to Pittsburgh. Uh, someone who's been a, a breath of fresh air, been coming out to these, and then he's been sharing fiction, which uh, just you know he's been doing some awesome fiction uh but it's very poetic in its own right you know so i think even someone complimented his fiction on his poetry like um <laughs> the other week but uh let's go ahead and welcome andrew Pryor back to the mic what's up man Hello. hey thank you uh i haven't uh, i'll just jump right into it <clears throat> i haven't read this one at this mic yet so uh we'll get started it's called violet so Violet felt the pistol barrel resting against his temple, felt the cold metal stethoscope 
pressed against the surface of the dark gray safe embedded in his midsection and pretended to be asleep. Violet could hear the man breathing through his broken nose as he worked the combination dial on Violet's stomach, spinning it a half turn to the right, then two full turns counterclockwise. The air in their motel room was still and silent, and the cushions on the threadbare sofa dug into Violet's shoulders. He breathed through his nose, in and out, like the man knelt next to him on the carpet was only a doctor listening to his heart and lungs, an inspector instead of a burglar. Finally, the man stood up. Violet felt the barrel of the pistol move from his temple to his forehead, brushing away a lock of hair. He kept his eyes closed, heard the man open and close the bedside drawer, heard the springs of the cheap mattress shudder under the man's weight, listened carefully to the man's breath wheeze in and out, waited for it to settle into a steady rhythm, and then Violet opened his eyes. <clears throat> the sound of the knob on the cigarette machine shunk shunking back into place stuck in Violet's mind as he reached down to grab his pack of menthols. The 60-something-year-old woman at the front desk was lolled back in her chair in front of an old color TV, one eye half open. Violet had been hassled for looking too young to buy smokes before, but that was further east, not since they got into this part of the country where all of the states were made out of right angles and dust. The man with the broken nose was adamant that they never stay in one place for too long. Outside, the moon was full, shining down on the piles of beer cans that had made their home at the bottom of the long-drained motel swimming pool. Violet leaned against the low fence and looked at the glittering green and blue and silver spots of light below him, put a hand against the dial under his shirt, turned it back and forth, feeling something clicking from down in his waist and up through his ribs and spine. He could hear the combination in his head, the sounds of keys jingling, orange juice poured into a glass, bicycle spokes turning, the flicks of thousands of lighter wheels. Violet lit a cigarette, took a deep drag, slid his lighter back into his jeans pocket. He reached under his shirt and spun the dial, right, then left, then right again, sounds clicking and glitching out from his midsection and up into his head, soda tabs and radiostatic trills and polyphonic bleep beeps all clacking against each other like bits of colored glass inside a kaleidoscope. The door to the safe swung open and the papers inside shifted in their loose stack. Violet pulled one out, held up his cigarette to it, burned a hole in the name Zurich. The paper caught a flame and the violet let it go, the wind pinning it to the chain link fence until it turned to ash. Violet thought of how he'd saved all his baby teeth in a wooden treasure chest when he was younger, refused to let his mother know where he'd hidden them. When he'd first noticed the little door on his belly, it was the same color as his baby teeth, ivory and pearl. Then over time, the color of rain clouds passing overhead. Then over one night, the color of cigarette smoke, a pigeon hurtling out of a burning building charred feathers fluttering to earth. Violet reached into his back pocket, pulled out the gun, and aimed it at the open door in himself, both thumbs on the trigger. He could feel the chorus of combinations in his chest, layered and overlapped and intertwined, pictured the man with a broken nose with sweat pouring down his face as he worked in the moonlight and cracking the code. The first time he met the man with a broken nose, he'd woken up on a chaise lounge in someone else's penthouse with a man pointing the same gun at him. Soft light from the sconces on the walls, pictures of family members on high shelves, and a walking around live-in safe asleep on the job. That had been six months ago when Violet opened his eyes and looked up into the hole at the end of the trembling gun barrel. And his first thought was, I want it to be that color. Violet pulled the trigger. There was the sound of a click, first on the outside, then from inside Violet, another kink in the key, another digit in a trailing sequence. Violet threw the gun and it stuck in the chain link fence for a moment before clattering to the dirt. He picked it up and kicked at the fence until the chain link came loose and flopped against the dust and cement like a leftover skin. He stood there for a while longer, watching the shadows crisscross over the ground, over the lip of the swimming pool and over the beer can shining in the moonlight, silver and blue and green and gold, like a dragon's hoard. When the man woke up and pulled the gun out of the bedside drawer, Violet was already by the motel room door dressed and waiting. That's it. Awesome, man. Yeah, I love that. And as I like to say, that was it, but it was also everything. Uh, imagery is killer on that. Um, I know if people, you have uh, flash fiction recordings online, right? Uh, it's a uh, podcast, right? Yeah. You've yeah. Done? Um, yeah. What, what's the name again? 
It's called a story stoic. It's at storystoic.libsyn.com. I haven't That's updated right. it in a while, but I've been uh, updating myself. So good. Yeah, that's the best part, right? Doing yeah. that first. Um, awesome. Yeah. So if you have a link, I'll, I'll also forward that. But uh, is, I don't know if you have anything else you want to share or uh, announce. Not at the moment, no. Thank All you right, for having cool. me. I mean, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I got you turned sideways a little bit there. Um, Andrew Pryor, everyone, Pittsburgh. Um, yes, and the story is stoic. We've shared that link in the past. But if this is your first time tuning in, you can check out uh, some of uh, stories recorded in the past. Uh, and speaking of, of which, we do have archives here at the online open mic. So you can actually go back on our YouTube channel and we have a whole category just for our online open mics. We have other categories as well. Um, again, if you're in the El Paso area, uh, we have live open mics in which sometimes I do film, record, and post on YouTube. And then I also have a studio where I have other series. Anyway, just check that stuff out. Thank you, Andrew, once again. Uh, let me copy and paste that link right now while it's here. Uh, appreciate you once again. Thanks for everyone who's been here um, joining us, especially also on the live stream. Let's see, YouTube, the link is now, oh, actually, I'm going to copy and paste that bet, uh, better next time. You know, we're going to keep going. Next up, we're going to go and join us. Uh, let's see, we got a poem or story. If I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, is that if we're lucky, if we're lucky, we can get a poem and a story. Joining us uh, from Paris, she wishes, uh, but it is the Bay Area. Uh, someone who loves jellyfish and octopuses. I already hear the angry poets, octopodes. No, octopuses is, is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and welcome Finn Bell, keeping it real on the mic. What's up, Finn Bell? Hey, Happy there. New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. How's it going? It's going great. Thank you. Octopuses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sticking with that. <laughs> okay. So um, three poems from me, uh, an old one, uh, a borrowed one, and a new one. First, the old one called Vega and Altair. Today I am told today, the sparrows carry this song inside their throats as they frolic with the wind's daughters. Today I am told today, my mortal body sheds its false skin, releases its shape from beneath the weight of my liver. The rivers part, the skies part. They were inseparable in their past lives, but chose to forget. How do you cleave twin souls? Where do you place the knife to cut and leave no mark of blood? Like me, they will not recall what every planet forming anew used to call them. They lose the sensation of how their waves were a courtship, a call back and forth, beckoning, messages of longing sent in lapping lightning spark code. The rivers part, the skies part, and your beloved face once more familiar. Do we dare step forward? Do we tempt fate with our audacity, breaking hollow bones while we try to balance our flight? does not give us wings. We make our escape, but spines do not become permanent highways. This is the eon that my teardrops will not flood villages and plant seedlings in fertile soil that mocked my womb barren. This is the eon my teardrops will race the younger stars and we will taunt each other to spin Gaia once and then again on her axis. This is the season when you finally lay down your flute and the skies will not rumble discontent, they are placated. This is the season your flute charms fickle gods and celestial ones enjoy the mercury silver turn how they whim. Our fingertips know each other's warmth before we forget who we were once upon a time. I do not know your name any longer as your chariot passes between the heavens. And this next poem is by Hazia Wadud. Um, it is in dedication to Satellites 27 by Etel Adnan. It's called Shorn Treaded Red. Ochre starts, commence. Catalyst and even song enters, a flame lit, arched and yearn, gleam twofold. Weary, but not from this life in time, flame begets pools of shorn Decembers. Limber months evade us, 
the flood begets burnished catalysts and a hem treaded red quaked slide gleam and slide trifold mirroring the fresh lake whirring mirroring the whirring shorn wave 11 nocturnes you fibonacci you catacomb and i wanted to end with uh, this brand spanking new piece, which is still a work in progress. <laughs> so this is called Silver Redemption. Um, commence transmission. Rove carefully through and survive a soulless, disposable world with your perfect shell of a silver heart intact. One. Consider Utopia and all her plot holes. She is lover to her cousin in the underworld, twice as mad, copying the movement of replicate mind since her first birth. Two, promiscuity is allotted today, but not allowed. Always command performance on someone else's terms. The sexual revolution never happened. The androids are tidiness and they sweep the propaganda into the sewers. Below ground, new immortals dance. Bodies are not property, are not sanitized sexuality, augmented in filthy up thought data sequences. Stop, save, retrieve the corrupted hollow copy to keep you warm throughout the weak passion, climate controlled nights. Three, when we are death and rebirth and death and rebirth in an unending fire halo pattern in our solitary spheres, are we calling this now truly living? Number four, don't fuck the quasi robots. Make love to them completely. With abandon, they have feelings too, though they refrain from admitting it. They are aware the government guides them, governs them, governs us, watches our every movement in the keyhole and pretend they don't know we are also watching them, watching us. The complicity is silent. The subterfuge is absolute. Five, the androids imagine us before we conceive ourselves. Their own presence, illusion to fill the void of life. Our dreams are the construct. Our lives are the dream. Our lives are not the reality. Six, once we decide to cease to matter, our emptiness begins to design us a spaceship coffin to escape the pomegranate-shaped earth, regurgitate its six seeds, eject from a hellish multidimensional paradise. We look back at our ruins, we cannot help it. Humanoid craving, concrete proof of our destruction. Only here does the illusion shatter. Seven, first entry in celestial explorer's log, love is beyond the tangible, immaterial and organic, alchemy and magic, blood and flesh and bone. Love is the universal truth. Transmission ceases, transmission resumes. Eight, when given the option, the only choice should be to always bite the sun. Transmission no longer found. This is for Tanith Lee, 19 September 1947 to 24 May 2015, author of um, Never Bite the Sun and The Silver Metal Lover, science fiction. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing such unique pieces that you were sharing today. Um, uh, for again, Finvel, um, let's just say someone's tuning in for the first time, you have so much online programming and shows and like you're involved with so much, like how can people get, <laughs> I know like, to stick with the theme, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you know, podcasts, you're on, on Spotify, YouTube, you run, you have shows that, open mics and writing workshops and, and, and uh, karaoke nights and movie nights. How can people like kind of keep in touch with all that? And like, what can people expect this week, for example? Well, damn, you, you make me seem, I feel so guilty now. You make me seem like I do a lot still, <laughs> which I don't really. Um, but yeah, this week um, we are coming back with our Thursday night open mic twice this month um, because I've been craving twice. So um this upcoming theme on Thursday is going to be planes, trains, and automobiles. Choo-choo. 
<laughs> um, and uh, Eddie Potastic's Movie Night is also on the roster. That is coming up uh, beginning of next week or mid next week. And our movie of the month is Night at the Museum. Um, then following that, uh, the day following that is Christopher T. George's Poetry Games, which is inspiration and revision. And that's all on my link tree forward slash Ben Bell. Da -da -dun. Beep, beep. <laughs> that's a great ended. ending. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh man, now now you have to end every everything like that. Uh, every I know. performance transmission ended. Oh man, with the oh. robot dance. <laughs> Yes. Or the Robo Boogie. I don't know if you guys are fans of Flight of the Concords. They have such a great uh, song. The humans are dead and kind of reminds me of that. But they, they say in the future, there are only, there's only one dance, the robot and the Robo Boogie. Oh, sorry. There are two dances. I, I, I'm just quoting it. But check it out. Uh, but Finn Bell, uh, yes, uh, if you share that link, I'll go ahead and post it on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And yes, <laughs> thanks for joining us and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> um yeah and then i did introduce a lot and i love how you're like you make it sound like i do a lot and then you proceeded to like tell us like just in the week like so there's this and then this and this and this so it's great um this online these online spaces like bleed into others you know so if you guys are interested in, in joining any of them you guys are always uh welcome to them just you know hit hit people up uh i just saw Drisha join us that's cool Trisha, if you want to sign up, there's still room, by the way. So just let us know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and come back to El Paso, uh, where uh, this next performer always rocks the coolest of T-shirts. But right now, I got to give props on the one he's wearing right now. Uh, let's give it up for Mr. Monday Night, Mr. Kit Wren. Take it away, my friend. I put on for my city. Uh, thank you, Richie. Thank you for doing this every week. Uh, Gonna do two of mine, and then I'm gonna uh, do do the first in a in a lot of parts, but we'll get to that later. Uh, just just gonna just gonna test drive a few things that I'm generally not sure about, but you know how it goes. All right. I have never felt like the oldest man in a room. Youth has power, but no certain authority. All of my predictions end in doom. Maybe my baby face gets me in the club, but soon it won't be funny when they ask for my ID. I always feel like the youngest in the room. Every silence makes me dread the coming boom. This is read as youth acting cynically. Every one of his predictions ending in doom. I see the younger cohorts move from morning to noon, the Zoomers inventing irony and then discovering sincerity. Yet I still feel like the youngest in the room. But of course, they know that I don't Zoom. They post mocking pictures of Steve Buscemi. They laugh at my predictions ending in doom. And the elders think my panic inexperienced folly one that priests see every day in their laity. I might never be the oldest in a room. That's my prediction, ending in doom. And here's another, another short one called Planned Obsolescence. Maybe it's not a recent conspiracy of the big multinational firms. Your heart is supposed to break. You're supposed to grow out of things and have new routines. The best thing in your life could fall to seven, despite holding steady. Is it still love when it's not desperate? Is it still needed when it's not necessary? There are places that I miss that I never want to see again. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, throw everything at him. Um, yeah, and so um, I fancy myself a critic, and every year I go through uh, the best American short stories and I rank them. And over the next, this is going to take a little bit. Uh, I'm not doing the whole thing tonight. Like, calm down. I've 
picked as stopping point. But I want to read to you um, the winner of the Kit Ren Acts Like He's a Big Shot contest for 2022. Uh, over this and the coming weeks, I'm going to read to you uh, The Ghost Birds by Karen Russell, one of the best short story writers around. The Ghost Birds. I led the way through the woods because I didn't want my daughter to have her first encounter with the ghost flock alone. We were trespassing, but it seemed highly unlikely we'd be caught. The school had been abandoned since the previous century, when ash from the Great Western fires made most of the region unlivable. My daughter had never set foot inside an old-fashioned brick-and-mortar school and seemed more intrigued by the idea of seeing a chalkboard than by the birds. The school was on the outskirts of a red zone in our family's ancestral breeding grounds. Oregon on the older maps, the ones from my boyhood. An evocative name, a name I loved and mispronounced with reverence at age 11. I grew up in a town called Eugene in the shadow of mountains that were unreachable by my third birthday, or gone. We were going in heavy, geared up. The blood kept jamming in my head. My daughter, Starling, Looked so small in my viewfinder, struggling under the weight of her spectograph. She is turning 14 in November, and she has never seen a bird off screen. Two milestones for me that dusk, my first visit to the world's largest known roost of Beau Swifts, and my first trip with my daughter post-divorce. As we pushed on toward the chimney, I wished that I had invited Orene. I hadn't wanted my new girlfriend to intrude on my time with Starling, but now that our trip was underway, I regretted the decision. I could have used the extra set of muscles. Another paranormal birder's expertise. Aurene has the most extraordinary eyes. The burst purple of a calliope hummingbird's throat feathers. We've been dating for three months now, if you define dating as sleeping under bridges, hoping to glimpse a colony of ghost swallows. I do. And fortunately for me, so does Aurene. The school's 80-foot brick chimney was the tallest man-made structure for miles. It would be difficult to escape if the surveillors took an interest. Aureen was shot in the former Okefenokee swamp while searching for traces of the ivory-billed woodpecker. Another birder in our network, Susie, had been held for ransom after being caught by surveillors in the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve while mapping the migration of the resplendent Quetzal, a bird that's lineage dates back 49 million years and that has been extinct for the past 20. Popple lost his pinky to a surveillor's laser while taking speed photographs of the ghost of a cedar waxwing. The surveillors aren't much for small talk. They won't hesitate to put a trespasser in a bag. Irene was lucky that day in the swamp. She clung to a branch on one of the few living cypress trees, pulling herself up into its saving arms. The AQI was such a nightmare that the surveillors left her behind. Once the sky became deeded property, Surveillers started patrolling the hazy air above the lonely scrublands and evaporated lakes. Their employers are paranoid in proportion to the suffering that surrounds them. They seem to feel that anyone who casts a shadow in a red zone is an echo terrorist. We joke that they may want to keep the escape routes to the moon clear. You'd think they'd look the other way, Popple huffed, huffed to me during our spring count. What's it to them if a pair of paunchy loners are out here collecting songs? It's nothing they can profit from. My daughter mercifully missed the land grabs and the water wars fought above the rasping aquifers. The sky is what has been colonized in her lifetime. Private highway system branching out of Earth's shallows into outer space. Its imaginary lines conjured into legal reality and policed with blood red force. A single human being now claims to own all the sky that lifts from the Andes to Mars. I had a recent run-in with a surveillor myself. I had not mentioned this to Yesenia, my daughter's mother. She is a warrior by nature and I did not want to kindle that fire. I did not want to be consumed by it either. My pilot friend Stu, a cheerful alcoholic with a humming jet license, had flown me to the red zone south of Mount Hood where I'd spent three weeks camping out and listening to the fuzzy music of a dead sparrow. I escaped the surveillor in the conventional way, the uh, blood bribe. Cash is not a resource I have much of, but my blood type is rare and beautifully oxygenated. To be a kid requires difficult detective work. You have to piece together the entire universe from scratch. 
I tried to remember this when Starling turned three and her questions evolved from who that and when snack to that developmental rocket booster. Why? No adult is ever more than three whys away from the abyss. Children wake up to the knowledge that they have missed almost everything. Millennia of life on earth and the blank booming, excuse me, the blank blooming that preceded us. All children are haunted, I'm sure, by the irretrievably lost worlds behind them. My generation felt this vertigo keenly. By the time I was born, half the world's 10,000 species of birds had gone extinct. I was the kid who loved baseball cards and antique globes, vintage newspapers and paperback novels, the arterial reds and blues of old surveyor's maps. At Don's Pond, I bought a partial encyclopedia set that on my shelf looked like a boxer's toothless grin. I left hopeful spaces for the missing volumes. My father called my bedroom Jasper's Library of Rags. Well, I was 10. I could not explain why it was thrilling to spelunk backward through time. I became aware of the past as a vast and mostly unmapped space, still shimmering with the inlaid mineral of the unknown possible, the cooled magma of a finalized reality. When I became a teenager, real lava was flowing in our streets. Phreatic eruptions had become commonplace, along with food shortages, tsunamis, hurricanes, and wildfires. History was my sanctuary throughout the whirling and burning of the 2040s and 50s. By the time I discovered the paranormal birding, birding society, extinct bird species outnumbered living ones, I should have been collecting feathers in 2040, not oil rolls, baseball cards, and rotary telephones. I never suspected that every bird would disappear in my lifetime. Wavelengths of color and song, ice pigeons, yellow-eyed penguins, great blue herons, purple gallinwees, red-throated sunbirds, Somali ostriches, rock doves, dale chicks, accumulating damage with each smoky breath. There was a last nestling of every species on the nightly news, and outside our sealed windows, we watched birds dying from the smoke waves and the fast-moving plagues, from habitat destruction and hunger, from triple-digit temperatures and neurotoxic metals powder powdering the air. When I was Starling's age, I did not understand somehow. Even as I lifted the greening copper of a 20th century telephone to my ear, that our time would end as well. I think I'll leave it off for there for now. But yeah, to be continued. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Thanks for sharing. The, uh, well, I'm looking forward to the rest, but yeah, thank you. All right, and announcements. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, so all the social needs, as someone somewhere presumably says, uh, Instagram at Kit Ran Away, Twitter at Kit Talk Sports, uh, Kofi.com slash Kit Ren. Uh, Facebook, easy enough. Uh, you know, I, I make sense. I make like one cent a word. So, like, if you want to send something on the PayPal, go ahead. If you want to just send me an email, you know, questions, comments, complaints, threats, that's easy enough. And we bike. As you heard, as you heard, uh, Robin, mom, say earlier, she's going to be hosting January 7th, the investment, investing in your word bank. It will be quite a show. And we have uh, next week, uh, the week after that, we'll have uh, Kelly Mary McMaster, uh, our uh, friend in Toronto, will be uh, continuing her series about dance and a sort of poetics of dance. She'll be focusing on a specific choreographer, uh, Crystal Pite, Pite, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I knew how to, but she showed me how to spell it. So that's the hard part. Uh, a lo another local, Maria Perez, will be presenting a short film and designing a workshop around that. And on the 28th uh, will be, uh, will be the uh, brother of Bill Sparks, who, uh, as it turns out, is a, uh, composer and book writer of musicals. And he will have a workshop prepared. I'm really looking forward to that one because it has an air of mystery about it. But yes, the Tumble Words Project, year 28. We're keeping it going. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to them. I'm glad Tumble Words is back. Kit Ren, everyone follow him also online. Thank you. 
All right, let's go ahead and replace this. Oh, see, you're already on it. <laughs> see, it helps when you have the co-host commands because you can just switch yourself out quickly, you know. Everyone else has, everyone else has to kind of stay there for a little bit. Uh, anyway, cheers. Uh, let's see. We're going to go ahead and uh, get some music up in here and uh, check it out. Our next performer has been here before, but uh, unless you're like a dedicated viewer in here every single week and keep track of everyone, you might not remember him because he comes very uh, rarely, and, and I don't blame him because getting your PhD is a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of your time. So uh, returning to our online mic, we do have uh, Tommy Joe who's going to share a song. Uh, Tommy, what's up? Are you still with us here? Yeah. Richie, yeah, what's uh, up? <laughs> I mean, yeah, hey, what's going on, man? Long time no see, and yeah. uh, thanks for having me. And uh, this is a great opportunity for people to – can continue to perform in the online manner and and uh, maybe hopefully one day like we we see it live and and online at the same time that'd be pretty neat. Um, yeah. uh, so right on, I'm gonna go ahead and perform a song uh, from uh, from something that I was working on, you know, uh, this past year, and it's the first time I performed it. Uh, it's called "In the Still of the Silence." Love it, love it. Original song, right? 
Yeah, I wrote it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, was that you were just gonna play one, right? Or did you want? Yeah. Want to do? Yeah, that was <laughs> cool. How? Uh, <laughs> do, uh, do you have anything you'd like? Any pages or thing you'd like to promote for your music? Or yeah, I got um. Let me pull it up. I got a SoundCloud, uh, so I could throw it on the chat or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Cool. And I will share that. And uh, yeah, man, how's school going? Uh, it's pretty crazy. I've been, uh, but I keep the guitar right by me, and that's what I I kind of like uh, fall to to get through it, and um, and it's it's a good thing. But I'm just I'm learning about like I'm studying and dissertating and uh, augmented reality and uh, and education. So just some cool like trying to bring the educational like environment to the uh, into the the like virtual type of world and 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 spaces that we kind of grow up dealing with so reflecting like our our technological culture in the classroom that's like the aim of that whole of my whole like like place in that you know i grew up playing video games so um so uh, you know and we a lot of us did right and and so like whenever we're going into the classroom and it doesn't it looks different and there's not a lot of like technology in it it's hard it's it's difficult for us more difficult for us to really kind of relate to it so education reflecting culture is you know where that whole thing comes from and our culture is technological and ar is like the next the next thing so that's uh that's kind of my my whole innovation you know and and uh like aspiration so i'm gonna yeah. share my yeah. uh, soundcloud link in the chat and uh yeah thanks <laughs> all right man appreciate it glad you can make it <laughs> see see you next year no, i'm kidding <laughs> no good luck oh that is a nice guitar yeah you were getting some compliments on on youtube there <laughs> yeah, awesome man figure it out yeah <laughs> thanks richie it's all it's all good man this is why we're here and if you ever want to meet us in person we do have uh in-person shows uh throughout the month um we post it on our on our on our uh, social media uh shout out to by the way yeah so sandy's still here what's up also shout out to luisa who came here once and, and read uh which was awesome she runs Beanalog Studios uh, over in, in Montana on montana streets so you guys should hit them up and if you guys for your recording needs um and they, they do really cool stuff um including working with technology it's a cool little, little segue there but uh let's go ahead and keep going we got some more peeps uh once again welcome to the online open mic we do this every monday um pretty much if you want to sign up to perform usually it's in the description of the video while we're live if you want to sign up ahead of time i try and put it out 24 hours before on our we have a, a link tree and just any of our social media really um, sometimes I forget it's a little late, but I try my best. And if I forget, you can just shoot me a message. You can follow me on Instagram, Deadwall Reveries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I just need a little, a little reminder. Uh, I forget, I forget sometimes. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's. Uh, we're gonna go to. Uh, by the way, Tommy's joining us from El Paso. Just thought I'd mention mention that EP El Paso. Be Uh But we're gonna go ahead and continue uh, in Washington D.C. He's already been name dropped on the show, uh, bringing us some some poetry, some poetic goodness. The man who has it in his name. Let's go ahead and welcome Ed Poetastic to the stage. Thank What's you, up? What's up, my brother from Nellie Mother with words like thunder? Happy New Year, Rex Happy Shirt. New Year. I'm glad you guys are here. Woo! You you guys always get me in gear. You guys lead me to tears. Oh wait, that's right. I need to remember I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ed Potastico, and I'm feeling fantastic. Please get a time to draw my rhyme for Awful Sublime. I got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a frozen cow? A milkshake. <laughs> what did the bee said to the doctor? Is this going to sting? What did the, be what did the beaver call his resort? The big dam. <laughs> what was the chicken's wrestler's name? El Pollo Loco. <laughs> what was the turtle's resolution for this year? 
slowly and precisely by house insurance. <laughs> Last but not least, what is one thing alligators hate? Allegations. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We would love this open mic. Uh, always make me feel all right. All right, I got three poems. My first poem is called "What the Um They Say About You." What do they say about me? I really don't care. Names on the labels—they're not here or there. Labels don't instantly disable. They'll wallow in dark despair. Know what some say about MLK and Gandhi? It really wasn't pleasant or nice. They helped on a deep passion degree, even for a painful price. People need to understand, words only words. They could be either iron or sand. Don't be too disturbed. They can't command or demand. When someone says anything bad about you, pay them no thought or mind. They don't know what you do. Leave their dark clouds behind. Get lost in your adventurous views. Do not mind them. Be a line while they stay blind. They don't control your fate. Can't push your buttons or pull your strings. Let them bask in their self-hate. Pursue your unique golden rings. We can all relate. Life is whatever you create. All right. Let's do it. This is called Drunken Fish. <clears throat> do, 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 do. <clears throat> Cause I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowns and the beer chases my blues away and I'll be okay. I'm not big on social graces. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis. Oh, I got friends in low places. Woo! Please drink responsibly before you hurt your man or sweetie. Please don't get pulled over by a roaring hangover. Please know your limits before reality hits. This is called Drunken Fish. A cup of Henny to make me sing like Whitney. A cup of wine to make me feel fine. A cup of beer to put me into joyful tears. A cup of Guinness to put me in a stage of bliss. A cup of blue moon to turn me into a balloon. A cup of Bud Light to make me feel all right. A glass of martini to make me feel like Bond, sweetie. A cup of pina colada to make me feel the beach drama. A glass of grasshopper to make me feel like a show starter. A cup of Bloody Mary to make me feel like Dracula and scary. A cup of lager to make me feel a bit hotter. A cup of ale to make me straighten my sail. A cup of Sammy Adams to, uh, oh, hmm, that was random. A cup of porter to make me feel in order. A cup of strout to make me hungry for trout. A cup of mead to make me loose like weed. A cup of angry orchard to make me put one foot forward. A cup of Corona to make me sing my Sharona. A cup of Budweiser to make me get more, much higher. A cup of Dos Stuckies to make me feel at ease. If you don't drink, it's okay. Too much to drink, you can't think. Enjoy your days. I know what you're thinking. Yes, I drunk them all. It was college. The bottle was singing. I was answering the call. I know what. I'm, I'm not a pushover. Oh, God, here comes the hangovers. <laughs> Hope you like that one. Yeah, I got one more. This is called um, Poetic Symphony. <laughs> yeah, here, just sorry about that. I'm sorry, Symphony of Poetry. <clears throat> Poetry is live in the name Sun for Our Rose. Well, any explanation or logic goes. The sweet symphony of pure creativity. So appreciate the effects and the sensitivity. Sharp words fire straight to the heart, rain down through skies of vivid art. Each word is covering emotions, like fishes dancing in the clear ocean, seeding a bouquet of colorful flowers, blossoming in a magnificent array of power, writing and reading like dancing and singing. The braid of words is only the beginning. Notebooks tell us into the literary world. Pages jumping off insightful and lifeless spirals. Shape our concrete or imaginative minds. Lessons grow in a very personal design. The pleasure of constant, um, the pleasure of constant desirable writing. Patterns of free verse, lime rick, haku, or rhyming. Reinventing tales of new, personal, and old. Project them to shine like luminous gold. Oh, poetry, you allure me with your verbal melody. 
ears full of whirly fireworks of complete harmony, the lion saw this ugly yet beautiful universe, floating words of true verse going straight on course. Please downpour us a radiant sight of weather. Show us till we're redder or feel even better. Happy New Year! Oh, great conclusion, man. I love that. Thank you, Ed. Uh, how can people find you online? You can find support me at you. this. Oh, sure, no problem. You can support me by coming to this open mic that makes our Monday night such a delight in the wonderful spotlight. And if you want to follow me, please feel free. My Facebook um, name is Eddie Foreman, and my IG is Eddie from 92. Remember, if the mic is right, I'll be there to shine plus the insight. If you see me quiet, you take guess. The answer is yes. However, stay positive, safe, and blessed, and never stop spewing or singing the wonderful service outside of your chest, and never stop feeling and being your best. Right on. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Sometimes you, you have me on the replay, like like analyzing your jokes like yo what did he do there my my my, my is there some what are the meanings here what layers are we working with um it's funny man i appreciate it uh check check him out um and again karaoke nights and movie nights and stuff as well that he's involved with so thank you appreciate you as always uh and happy new year like i said uh our uh, our next performer uh, couldn't make it last week because he was traveling, but he did make sure to tune in on the YouTube live stream because I, I saw him commenting. But he did make it uh, today. Joining us uh, in Malaysia, we have Julian Matthews. And uh, yeah, welcome back. Good to have you. Hey. Hi. Happy New Year. Uh, just uh, one poem. Second skin. Everything has a skin, the down on a hatchling, the insides of bedding. Winter is just another covering, a new fresh dressing for a scorched earth, a battle-scarred forest, husk trees, a brief healing to melt away into green. Everything has a peel, a rind, a skin, oranges, bananas, coconuts, even the groundnut and the peanut within. A snake molts every month or two. A swan replaces all 25,000 feathers every summer. The hibernating bear in a cave always comes back hungrier. Everything has a mask, a coat, a shell. The forest, an overstory, the tree, a bark, the book, a cover. Humans shed their entire outer layer every two to four weeks. A thousand skins in an average lifetime. Each a story to tell, maybe. Some skins are too thin. In the pandemic, we reluctantly put on masks. We washed our hands, we sanitized, we isolated, we stood apart. We walked away just to stay alive. Some claim to be the wiser ones who could see through walls beyond the fake facades. Conspiracy advocates infected by viral variants on the internet. They walk among us still, hands in everyone still. Everyone has a skin, some thicker within. Pre-pandemic, the masks people wore were invisible. They were always there, only it took a while for us to figure them out. Sometimes people are two-faced, presenting as people pleasing, but then also dastardly deceiving. They washed their hands too, to hide the evidence, to desensitize. They're the enemies you keep closer, soul suckers, drunk on their own egos, even when stone cold sober. They are endemic in an incentivized system that encourages duplicity, lies, hypocrisy. But then again, we're all knee deep in the system. Some of us more buried than others, even those in denial, scraping bottoms, yet seething on top, covering ourselves in its grimy revelations, the mortal means by which we survive. Immortality, after all, is for lofty angels. Devils thrive in soil detail, details. Everything has a skin. 
I once saw kids and grown adults at a mall in cosplay, practicing around in colorful wigs, fierce makeup, and outlandish outfits, anime and manga characters unfamiliar to me, having fun being unrecognizable, yet recognized in disguise, if only for a day. We all have the capacity to reinvent, to act, to adopt a persona. They say to fake it until you make it, but all sequent lives have consequences. Everything has a skin. Sometimes we adapt the role so well we become the other, the salesman imbibing his own snake oil, the charmer hypnotized by her own spell. Being professional may mean swallowing our true amateur, authentic, artistic selves. Defiling haloed grounds for a hollow victory. The end justifying the meanness. It's inherent in our own dual nature, I suppose. To be both poison and elixir. To alleviate and induce suffering. The exquisite curved tip of a scorpion's sting. Everyone has a second skin. Yours may be warm, soft and tender. Mine, colder. Crustier. I'm two thirds of the way in. Some rings yet to encircle me, some pages yet to be writ. Your chapter is only beginning. Your core still terraforming. Your edges yet to flake off. Everything. Everything has a skin. Even snow changes on its journey from cloud to earth. Water vapor attaches to every hurtling icy drop. It can't choose where it falls, where it's been. But when you magnify, home in, peer closely enough, every snowflake is a six-pronged crystal. No two ever alike. You never know from its coming where it's going. A second skin can also be a thing of beauty, just waiting to be found, just wanting to be seen. Everything has a second skin. Everything. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Julian. Uh, only one poem, but getting deep in there with that killer lines, drunk on their own egos, even when stone cold sober. Damn. Lots, uh, lots to reflect on there. Appreciate it. And I know you have a SoundCloud. Uh, sorry, SoundCloud. <laughs> you have a SoundCloud. I uh, know you have a link tree, right? Julian Matthews, right? I'll go ahead and share that. Thank you so much for joining us. Glad you could be here today. Thank you. Um, All righty then. Uh, SoundCloud. He's got to make one now. Um, um, let's go ahead and to keep this going, someone who just signed up and, uh, wait, she's still here. Let's make sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have Drisha in the house was right here before, uh, Drisha, how are you doing today? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for the warm welcome. I'm doing great. I hope you all are too, uh, with the coming of the new year, by the way, a very happy new year to all of uh, the people present here. And yes, thank you for having me here. So I'm very glad to be a part of today's open mic. I'll just start since um, this paucity of time. So the first poem is called The Journey. Buried inside lies the land of my kind, away from the truth, rush, stress, and the worldly grind. I mean, that's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. People just valorize that suitcase and add unusual values. Maybe I should follow my intuition. Maybe I should give it a try. Fearless and free, willing to walk the beat. But what could go wrong? Nothing that I can provide. The only fear that I have is to be judged and teased. They see me run. They see me climb. They see me cold. But I know what's best for me. And so I crawl. Although now that I wheedle my way to the case, even if, even if it feels wrong, this is a task I can't abdicate. Always running from the truth on the account of fear. Always running away from the truth on account of fear. I wonder how long will this go till I demur. Nervous yet curious to see what lies ahead. Nervous yet curious to see what lies ahead. I hope there is no danger or risk that I'll ever regret. Well, this is where I enter a new phase of my life. 
let's see whether ladder drops me or my pride ready to see what adventure lies ahead preparing myself to face the risks and threats could my adios that is all that i can say till we meet again surely this isn't where the journey ends so that would be my first piece uh let me quickly bring on to the uh, to the second piece it's called the first one was called the journey and the second one is known as adventure so you know the story of my life oh yes the story of my life captured in fear of bias and vice i've gotten so used to it for what they call me i wonder will ever i ever get rid of this misery they say it's a phase it shall pass but i know this is just to please me and the public mass i know who i am and what's my need i know who i am and what's my need i know who i am then how does it matter if i differ from you and i am of a different breed who are you to judge me who are you to blame it's my life and i know i'll save my own way can you imagine how atrocious it feels to be judged not only atrocious but terrible to be judged to be judged if i do not identify as he or she feeling like a bird caged inside so i will break the cage with all my might so what if i can't identify so what if i can't identify and surrender so what if you cannot accept me and make it a blunder but i am who i choose to be and the truth lies in my destiny you can judge you can comment you can judge you can comment but till how long will you decide and dissent love who you are and trust me i'm loving my life i can't care more about comments judgments and cries but in the end you know it's the story of my life not only captured in fear of bias and vice just like the earlier time thank you that would be my two pieces and uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity i would be you can support me by following me on my instagram handles and linkedin pages i would be dropping it in the chat box perfect i'll share that looks like a beautiful day outside uh, we need more poetry outside by trees yeah. <laughs> i mean more with nature right <laughs> i love it thank you so much for joining us thank you all right drisha everyone awesome yes i i'm envious you know like i i wish I could go outside. It's it's cold out. It's cold and rainy outside right now for for me. But yeah, I'm I'm debating now. You know, and maybe next year, next next year, we just started a new one. What am I? I'm already talking about a new year. Uh, no, next week maybe I'll go outside in my backyard and stream. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, maybe a summertime stream would be kind of nice. But as always, thank you, Trisha, for joining us. Uh, I'll go ahead and as soon as you share that link, I'll share it on the YouTube channel and. Um, let's see i love that that you get to tune in and perform uh let's go ahead and as i look at our list it looks like we are coming towards the end and if you've been here since the beginning you know that there's only one way we close out the mic only one person we can have on and i am building it up so i can properly introduce him when the time is right because he's gonna want to film this he already know who he is Dan, the man in the house. Yeah. Dan, can you hear me? Dan, 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 Dan. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. What's up, man? Let's go ahead and you ready? Yeah. You filming? Yeah. And um, oh, action. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Hello again, Richie. Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, just to let you know, I'm heavily behind schedule. Well, I just uploaded my, uh, I just uploaded my New Year's uh, Eve uh, blog from uh, from two two nights ago on Friday and on Saturday, and um, yeah, and also, um, oh yeah, Jerisha, uh, one of us, one of us, yeah, according to Nick Paliogos. <laughs> uh, my audio is a little low. Uh, can you still hear me? uh okay audio's a little low yeah <laughs> okay <clears throat> okay 
You know, I think I'm going to read this once again for the Child's Calendar by John Updike. I'm going to do this one more for, for the year. So, since we're already in the new year, never fear. The new year is in tears. Yep, oh, it's in the rear. And here he is, a Child's Calendar by John Updike. This is January. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Bye, Terry. January. The days are short. The sun, the sun a spark, hung thin between the dark and dark. A fat snowy footsteps and track the floor, and parkas pile up near the door. The river is, fro is a frozen place, held still beneath the trees' black lace. The sky is low, the wind is gray, the radiator purrs all day. Yep. The month of, yeah, to my light, uh, okay. Yep, the month of January. And once again, a child's calendar by John Updike. Uh, good night, good night, Julian. Yeah. Click. <laughs> All right. And uh, I'm gonna do two poetries from Mary Swan. Uh, I'm sorry, Mary Oliver Swan. Okay. I'm gonna go with page 14 today. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Today is a day of dark clouds and slow rain. The little blades of corn are so happy. Unquote. All right. Okay. And all right, there's one more. How many days, page 18. How many days I lived and had never used the holy words. Tenderly I began them when I when it came to me to want to oh mystery infutable irrefutable sorry <clears throat> then I went out of that far place and into a field and lay down among the weeds and the grasses whispering to them fast in order to keep that world also, end quote. Okay, two poetry, Swan by Mary Oliver. Okay, all right. Well, I know the new year's here, but yeah, we're not in fear. Oh uh, yeah, 2023 is here, which will be my final month, uh, my final month in my 30s. So I'm five and a half months away. So I enter my 40s. Yep, my last of my 30s. So, hmm. oh man. Yeah, everybody was. Everybody didn't like the part when they say we're getting old, but I we have to accept it. But I accept it as well. Yeah, we do. I am getting old. How far is a fool of fold? And there's a fool's gold. Hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> and uh, since then, okay, okay, and starting next week, uh, we're gonna make a countdown to uh, to Valentine's Day once again. Uh, the words of love, Priopos, the romantic saints from Mexico. Yeah, so <laughs> how about this? Pun or por un beso ni dios ni dos a nadie carcitica dios. For a little kiss or two, God won't punish me or you. <laughs> and hormona matas nuerona. Hormones kill nu neurons. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but sorry next week. Uh, sorry next week. We'll make a countdown to the Valentine's Day. 
since we are more than a month away. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, I've heard of mic drops, not book drops. Ouch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What was the name of that book again, Dan? Uh, okay. Uh, Word of Love, Priropos, uh, Romantic Saint from Mexico. Yeah, okay. All right, here it is. Read it and weep it. Um, again, I'm behind posts on Twitter and Facebook, but you'll catch up on Instagram. But most importantly, find Dan the Man's Weekly on YouTube. Uh, just search the title, watch it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget the hashtag, Dan the Man's Weekly. All right. Yep, like I said, it's a new year, possibly a new beginning. So, all right, here goes nothing. Uh, be on the lookout for my part twos and part uh, part three and part four of my uh, best of 2022 slideshow. I just uploaded the, uh, the, I just uploaded, um, uh, the New Year's Eve, uh, the final blog of 2022, plus the final scenes of my poetry slam of 2022, uh, the final three uh, weeks of 2022. Okay, from last week. All right, I, I have it ready. So, all right, so, um, okay, guys. Yeah, and uh, all right, I hope to see you guys next Monday. And um, back to you, Richie. Let's call it a night. Or if there's any open spots, yeah bring him bring him here <laughs> uh you heard it first if there are any open spots out there in youtube land or you just join us next monday uh we don't have any chance actually i did make a wallace stevens joke earlier so it reminded me of his poem the snowman which i think encapsulates you know new beginnings winter kind of starting everything over so here's the snowman by wallace stevens one must have a mind of winter to regard the frost and the bows of pine trees crusted with snow and have been cold a long time to behold the junipers shagged with ice the spruces rough in the distant glitter of the january sun and not to think of any misery in the sound of the wind in the sound of a few leaves which is the sound of the land full of the same wind that is blowing in the same bare place for the listener who listens in the snow and nothing himself beholds nothing that is not there and the nothing that is all right for the online open mic shout out to everyone who performed in red tonight thanks to everyone who supported we'll see you next monday uh yeah tune in you can even sign up and perform yourself bye guys <laughs>